Jeff Bezos is best known as Amazon's founder, but he believes his most valuable company is Blue Origin. His space project is only six years behind the online giant, however, it is not on the same level. Blue Origin sees itself as the tortoise in the race against the hare. The hare is so confident about winning, it takes a nap. The tortoise is slow and steady and ends up victorious. But if SpaceX is the hare in this story, well, there's a twist, because this hare definitely does not take a nap. Thus, despite being two years later, Elon Musk's firm still beats Jeff's in every way, from NASA's $2.9 billion lunar lander contract to rockets, engines, and now what SpaceX just did in Florida just makes Blue Origin afraid. Why is that? All of this and more is coming up in this episode of Alpha Tech. Blue Origin leased Launch Complex 36, or LC-36, in Cape Canaveral, Florida in September 2015 to build a launch pad for their orbital launch vehicle, New Glenn. Groundbreaking for the facility to begin construction occurred in June of 2016. By March of 2018, Blue's construction at LC-36 was lagging, but the company stated they didn't think it would delay achieving the anticipated 2020 initial launch of New Glenn. However, as of 2022, Blue Origin does not expect to launch New Glenn until 2023 at the earliest. The Blue Origin Orbital Launch Site is situated on a total of 306 acres of leased land assembled from former Launch Complexes 11, 36A, and 36B. The land parcel will be used to build a rocket engine test stand for the BE-4 engine, a launch mount called the Orbital Launch Site by Blue, and a reusable booster refurbishment facility for the New Glenn launch vehicle, which is expected to land on a seaborne platform and return to Port Canaveral for refurbishment. Space Florida's Dale Ketchum called it a monster of a launch pad. It's going to be a beast, Ketchum said. But disappointingly, after six years, there's still a lot of unfinished parts here from Blue Origin. By contrast with Blue Origin, building a Starship launch site in Florida is just a backup for Elon Musk. For years, Musk has touted SpaceX's compound in Boca Chica as the gateway to Mars the site from which his company would launch its massive starship to carry astronauts to the moon and Mars. But thanks to FAA, that privilege could soon end as SpaceX CEO Elon Musk hinted that the company could eventually move operations to the Florida Space Coast. And then I think probably Cape Kennedy would be our sort of main operational uh, launch site. SpaceX has just begun building the Florida Starship launch site early this year. Regardless, its progress completely humiliated Blue Origin. Segment number seven of SpaceX's Super Heavy Starship service gantry just rolled out onto the Launch Complex 39A. Interestingly, an extension has been added to the waiting crane so it can lift the final full-size segment into place. Huge thanks to William Harwood for sharing these updates. Meanwhile, at Roberts Road, segment eight is also prepared for its own rollout while the construction has begun on the ninth segment. This section will hold the pulleys and mechanisms needed for the chopsticks and is the final section required before a cap segment would be placed on top. SpaceX plans to move the remaining tower segments to pad 39A in the coming weeks, aiming to finish the tower structure as soon as next month. Then teams will move the Super Heavy launch pedestal and articulating chopstick arms for integration at the launch site at pad 39A. The arms would be used for stacking the Starship on top of the Super Heavy booster. The company says the arms will also be used to catch the 9-meter wide Super Heavy booster when it comes back to Earth for landing. Amongst other work down at the Cape, the pouring of concrete for High Bay 3's foundation appears to end, and the structure will most likely begin rising from the ground in the coming days. Elsewhere, construction is underway at a dizzying pace at the Star Factory. The roof is expanding and the columns are being installed. In short, with current progress, we believe that a Pad 39A Starship launch site completely could be brought online in just the next few months. Obviously, there's no comparison, there is no pain. Looking at what Musk and his team did, then glancing at the area of Blue Origin, I even feel ashamed on behalf of Jeff Bezos. If I were him, maybe I would find a corner to hide in from the humiliation. Sadly, not only the construction speed, but even the production rocket speed of Jeff's firm is crushed by SpaceX. 
Much like SpaceX's next-generation Starship rocket, Blue Origin began work on its semi-reusable New Glenn rocket in the early 2010s. Jeff Bezos publicly revealed New Glenn just a few weeks before CEO Elon Musk's long-planned September 2016 reveal of SpaceX's next rocket, then known as the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS. Both were massive, meant to be powered by huge new methane oxygen-fueled engines and designed from the ground up with some degree of reusability in mind. But with fairly different designs and wildly different development philosophies, the paths of Blue Origin and SpaceX have only gotten further apart over the last six years. SpaceX thoroughly redesigned its next-generation rocket multiple times before throwing out a large portion of that prior work and settling on an unexpected stainless steel variant that CEO Elon Musk christened Starship in late 2018. Further differentiating the company, SpaceX began work on steel prototypes almost immediately and successfully built and flew a scrappy Pathfinder, powered by an early version of the same Raptor engine meant for Starship less than a year later. SpaceX then improvised a factory out of a series of tents and began churning out and testing dozens of more refined prototypes, seven of which would go on to perform flight tests between August 2020 and May 2021. SpaceX's last test flight ended with a full-size steel Starship prototype successfully landing after launching to an altitude of 10 kilometers. Testing slowed considerably after that success, but SpaceX appears to have begun ramping up again as it begins to test a Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 that have a shot at supporting the rocket's first orbital launch attempt. In contrast to SpaceX's Starship Vibrant timeline, Blue Origin's New Glenn, a smaller rocket, faces many delays despite the general characteristics of its design appearing to be virtually unchanged. What's more, and what makes it even stranger, is that Blue Origin has done practically zero integrated testing of any major New Glenn component. Only in 2022 did the company finally complete and test a New Glenn payload fairing. As a result, Blue Origin is nowhere even close to debuting its next-gen rocket in H1 2023, while SpaceX, who is pursuing full reusability and really only settled on the design of the larger rocket in 2019, could even be ready to attempt an orbital-class launch with Starship before the end of 2022. Put simply, after pouring a ton of money into space, all Jeff received was humiliation and a terrifying obsession named Elon Musk SpaceX. Perhaps Jeff is really not suited for this money-burning industry. Well, that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas about today's episode right there in the comment section. Your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.